We're meeting in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello and welcome to our short online service for today, Sunday the 20th of September. As you'll know, last Sunday we were back in church for the first time since lockdown and there was a good number there. It was great to see everyone. But we know this week has been a difficult week. This has the situation appears to be worsening again. So we'll continue to do this service for those of you who aren't able to or, or don't feel comfortable going back into church. And that includes those of you who maybe have been there for one or two services, but the situation is getting more difficult and you'd rather stay away. Just one thing that I need to say, um, we will be having our annual church meeting, which is the meeting where we hear reports from people like me um, and the Steve, the treasurer, but we also get to elect our new wardens um, and members of the PCC. That's going to be on Sunday, October the 11th. At the moment, the plan is for it to be held in church. But with the worsening situation, the diocese have indicated that there are, we are able to hold it online if we need to. Um, but put that date in your diary, it'll be after the church service um, and it'll be, so it'll be sort of like t about 10.45, I would think, on Sunday, the 11th of October. We're going to go straight into our Bible reading today and it comes from the book of Jonah. We're going to start to read from chapter 3 verse 10 um, through to the end. God saw what they had done, that they had turned away from their evil lives. He did change his mind about them. What he said he would do to them, he didn't do. Jonah was furious. He lost his temper. He yelled at God. God, I knew it. When I was back home, I knew this was going to happen. That's why I ran off to Tarshish. I knew you were sheer grace and mercy, not easily angered, rich in love and ready at the drop of a hat to turn your plans of punishment into a programme of forgiveness. So God, if you won't kill them, kill me. I'm better off dead. God said, what do you have to be angry about? But Jonah just left. He went out of the city to the east and sat down in a sulk. He put together a makeshift shelter of leafy branches and sat there in the shade to see what would happen to the city. God arranged for a broad-leafed tree to spring up. It grew over Jonah to cool him off and get him out of his angry sulk. Jonah was pleased and enjoyed the shade. Life was looking up. But then God sent a worm. By dawn of the next day, the worm had bored into the shade tree and it withered away. The sun came up and God sent a hot, blistering wind from the east. The sun beat down on Jonah's head and he started to faint. He prayed to die. I'm better off dead. Then God said to Jonah, what right do you have to get angry about this shade tree? Jonah said, well, plenty of right. It's made me angry enough to die. God said, What's this? How is it that you can change your feelings from pleasure to anger overnight about a mere shade tree that you did nothing to get? You neither planted it nor watered it. It grew up one night and died the next night. So why can't I likewise change what I feel about Nineveh from anger to pleasure? This big city 
of more than 120,000 childlike people who don't yet know right from wrong to say nothing of all the innocent animals. The story of Jonah is a great read. It's only four chapters long and I'd encourage you to read it. Of course, as we all know, either from films or books or when we went to Sunday school, the standout moment is when Jonah is swallowed by a big fish and then later spat out on the shoreline to rescue him. But I think there are many other parts of the story that are more interesting. A quick recap. God has told Jonah to visit the city of Nineveh and tell them that because of their wickedness, they're going to be destroyed. Jonah hears this clearly and responds by running in the opposite direction. He boards a ship going away from Nineveh to Tarshish. But while he's on that ship, a huge storm hits and it's so bad the sailors are throwing stuff overboard to try to survive. They've almost run out of anything to throw overboard. And so Jonah tells them, yeah, it's probably my fault. God told me to do something and I'm running away from him. So overboard goes Jonah. And that's the point where the big fish comes in. He's rescued in the, by the big fish and spat out onto the shore. Back on dry land, Jonah knows he hasn't got a choice. So he goes and does what God told him to do. Off he goes to Nineveh to tell them that they're going to be destroyed by God. Their reaction is one of complete and utter repentance. The king tells everybody that they should stop celebrating. He wears sackcloth and ashes and they turn away from the evil that they've been doing. And that's when today's reading kicks in. Because God has forgiven the people of Nineveh and he hasn't followed through on that threat to destroy them which makes Jonah angry. Jonah says to God, he has an argument with God even, he says, that's why I didn't want to go, because I knew that you're a loving, forgiving God, full of mercy, and you'd let them off. Sometimes life isn't fair. I know I've said that, my kids say that to me, and I just agree with them. Yep, it's not fair. One of the things we think about with fairness and justice, it's almost like people get their just desserts, we call it. But God's justice, God's fairness is different because we don't get our just desserts. God treats everyone the same. It's not that we can earn more to get that love. It's not like we... If we're good for most of our lives, we get, our, we get that love. It's not by going to church, we get that love. That love, that mercy, that forgiveness that he showed the people of Nineveh is open to all, regardless of who we are, how many times we've been to church, what we've done. We just have to ask God for it. That may seem incredibly unfair to people who have spent their lives in church, who have studied the Bible, who turn up for prayer groups, who have led, led a good life, have got involved in organising things to help people out. But the fact is, the person down the road who's a problem, a troublemaker, the person who may be dealing drugs, the person who may be people trafficking, the dictator, the terrorist leader, they are all capable of asking God for his forgiveness. 
and God will grant it to them. It seems unbelievably unfair. But that fairness, that unfairness comes because of God's total love for us. There is nothing we can do that will offend him so much. We don't, we're not worthy of his grace. Let us pray. Loving God, we just want to thank you that you're a merciful, gracious God. We thank you for Jesus, the sacrifice he made for all of us on the cross. And we thank you that by coming to you through him, we can experience your grace, your forgiveness, and be welcomed to be with you. In this difficult time now, Lord, we just pray for the decision makers. We pray, pray that the decisions they take may be guided by your wisdom and your compassion. We pray, Lord, for an end to this current situation. We pray for a vaccine or we pray that the, the virus may just go. It's gone on too long, it's damaging too many parts of our lives, Lord. We cry out to you for your love, your peace, your comfort, your joy to surround us now, Lord. We pray for those particularly who are struggling in mind, in body, in spirit, those who are working to the point of exhaustion and those who don't have work to do even if they want to do it. We pray for those who are caring and we pray for those who are being cared for. We pray for those who have been reunited with you in glory and for the families who are mourning their loss. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray that through this situation, we may always be aware to your love and mercy and grace in our lives. In Jesus Christ, Amen. We say together the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And a blessing. Christ, the good shepherd, who laid down his life for his sheep, bring us and all who respond to his voice into one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all you love and care for this day and always.